join the Navy and see the world, or so goes the old recruiting slogan. With water covering the greater part of the planet, you're also going to see a lot of ocean, which is precisely what an all-women crew aboard an Indian Navy sailing yacht has experienced as they circumnavigated the globe. The INS Vitharani made its final stopover in Cape Town, and Michelle went to meet the sailors. Having rounded Cape Horn at the tip of South America, the INS Vitharini crossed the South Atlantic to reach Cape Town, where this tiny yacht and a six-woman crew received a huge and well-deserved welcome. Senior naval officers, civic dignitaries, members of the diplomatic corps and a crowd of enthusiastic Cape Tonians were on hand to greet the Tharini as she edged across the final few meters to her mooring at the Royal Cape Yacht Club. Bonded by a shared dream, six young women from different parts of India embarked on a journey of a lifetime. Their mission was to circumnavigate the globe, touching the shores of Australia, New Zealand, the Falklands and South Africa. They spent in a couple of days in Cape Town and I'm excited to meet up with them to find out more about their incredible adventure. The Tharini's arrival coincided with the Festival of Holi and India's High Commissioner to South Africa and Lesotho was soon auspiciously red-cheeked. Today has been an exceptional day. We have the Tharini girls who have accomplished an incredible feat. They have demonstrated loud and clearly that nothing is impossible for a woman. Their gender does not define potential. I think they're also role models for both young South African women and Indian women, especially in face of a lot of women abuse in both countries. It shows you that if you create opportunities for women that they can do anything and sometimes even do it better than men. If proof were needed that size really doesn't count, the Tharini provided it. And while the yacht disappeared in the forest of masts, she and her crew had earned their place of honor in Cape Town. Michal took the opportunity to chat to the Tharini's master, Lieutenant Commander Vartika Josi. Vartika, congratulations on your huge achievement. What does it mean to you to be one of the first Indian women to achieve this mission? It's a very great honor to be doing such an expedition. It's a great responsibility and a very nice feeling to be doing something like this, not just for yourself, but for the rest of the world as well. By the end of the trip, it will be 230 days. Now that is a huge task. What inspired you to take on this role? I belong to the mountains of India, and before I joined the Navy, I had no clue what a sailboat looks like. I always wanted to explore the oceans and I always wanted to be close to the water and see how it is like to be on water. Now I know this has been months in planning. What training did you undergo before the trip? There were so many things that went into training us for this voyage. We had to literally start from scratch and learn everything about the boat, basic navigation, communication, weather prediction. And after we did some theoretical courses with the Navy, we started sailing on our training boat and most part of the year we would be out at sea. For a sailboat's voyage to qualify as a second navigation, what criteria needs to be met? We need to start and finish at the same port. So we started from Goa and we need to go back to Goa to call it a circumnavigation. We need to cross the equator twice. We need to round Cape Leuven, Cape of Good Hope and Cape Horn. We shouldn't be using any auxiliary mode of propulsion. That is, we have got a small engine, but we just can't use it. It's only to charge our batteries on board. Do you ever experience situations where there's no wind? Equator crossing comes with its own perils. We had to cross the belt of doldrums. It's known to have some of the calmest seas. You can actually watch your face and it looks like a mirror. It may even take you days to get through. We just have to be patient and uh, just keep waiting for the winds to rise. The Therini's globe-circling voyage began on the 10th of September 2017 and she was flagged by India's Minister of Defence, Mrs. Nirmala Sitharaman, before casting off from Goa. From there, she headed in a southeasterly direction, heading for Fremantle on the west coast of Australia, which she reached a month and a half later. The next leg of a voyage took the Tharini south of Tasmania and into the icy depths of the Southern Ocean, an area where high winds and heavy seas are an everyday occurrence. Continuing eastwards, she rounded Cape Horn in a further test of the vessel and her crew. But the elements weren't the only challenges that the six sailors would have to face. Is there any moments where you face real danger, such as pirates? There in the Indian Ocean, there are some areas which are pirate-prone. 
and we have got our anti-piracy ships from Indian Navy which are already deployed there and they're always alert, warning us in case there is existing threat and we avoid venturing out in those areas. While Ketan offered the crew members time to stretch their legs and enjoy the comforts ashore, the stopover also gave them an opportunity to do some maintenance to keep their craft ship shape and Michelle was invited to take a look around. Permission to come aboard? Welcome, let me give you a hand, please. <sighs> Pratiba, how do you prepare mentally for such an expedition? Before setting sails for this particular journey of circumnavigation, we sailed for two and a half years in and around India and sometimes out of India as well on the training voyages as a team. Is there a certain amount of strength and agility that you require? It does require some physical strength, but if you have to use too much of muscle power, then definitely there is something wrong happening, you are doing something wrong. If you are physically fit, then you will be able to do it. With six women on board, how would you describe the energy? Oh, spirits are very high. You know, everything is very disciplined and right on time. Now, this is an initiative by the Indian Navy to empower women. And you've spoken to countless young girls. Are you noticing their curiosity about this as a potential career choice? Yes, we interact uh, with lots of lots of school students and college students. And you actually can see in their eyes, they are so much into it, they are so inspired. That thing inspires us as well to keep doing this. High Commissioner Richie Rakamboj officially opened a photo exhibition of the voyage at the Yacht Club, where question and answer session was presented by the crew. With regards to the community back home, the kids that are growing up in that community. It's true that there are lots of people in India who doesn't have much idea about saving, and there are lots of youths who are willing to do such kind of activities. This event was open to members of the general public who were eager to learn more about every detail of the seafarers' experiences and to capture some selfies. With the final leg of their voyage ahead of them, the crew prepared to set sail once more. American author William Feather once said, one way to get the best out of life is to look upon it as an adventure. Having spent 230 days out at sea with stops in four countries, I would say that these six phenomenal ladies are a living embodiment of his words. The morning of their departure saw a blessing being invoked on the Tarini and her crew before they headed out of port. <laughs> After rounding the cave, they could set course for home. We wish these six intrepid young women fair winds and following seas all the way safely to Goa.